Hello and welcome to Nana's Crafty Home. My name is Tanya. Today's tutorial is going to show you how to crochet the Ties That Bind blanket. This is a free crochet pattern that you can find on my website. I'll have a link below in the description if you want to head on over to get those free written pattern instructions on my blog. This beautiful heirloom quality blanket features a puff stitch with simple uh, single crochets and front post single crochets and they're linked together creating this wonderful design. This is a simple four row repeat so it's easy to memorize your row repeats and it has an absolutely gorgeous tasseled edge and done in a contrasting color. The edging is only done on the two shorter ends of the blanket I made this blanket in a bulky yarn which really gives it a squishy softness, works up quickly, it's a lot of fun to make. I think you're really going to enjoy this blanket. If you're interested in resizing this blanket, I also have those instructions for you uh, at the link below uh, so that you can head on over to the blog and it will give you all those details to make your blanket a different size than mine. I've made mine with the Lion Brand a Color Made Easy, which is a bulky yarn. And I used um, 10 of my Color B, so 10 skeins, for a total of about 2,470 yards. And then I used a um, contrasting color. And this one is in mineral yellow, really beautiful. This one's birch, and they just really look nice together, really nice contrast. And then for that color, I used a total of 320 yards. So this blanket uh, made with the bulky to get to the size that I made, and my finished blanket ended up being about 14, 45 inches wide and 53 inches tall, not including my tassels. So a good size blanket, but it did use a lot of yarn, primarily because I, I'm using uh, puff stitches for this blanket. I'm using a size K or a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. Let's go ahead and get started. Then you're going to chain 111. So one, two, three, four. For row one, I'm going to work one double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So counting over from your hook, one, two, three, and four, and work one double crochet in that fourth chain. Those skipped chains are going to count as my first stitch. And then I'm going to work a double crochet in every chain to the end. So just continue on working this first row with one double crochet in every chain. Once you've worked a double crochet in every chain, you're going to have a stitch count of 109. We're going to fasten off color A and switch to color B for row two. So switching up to color B on that last double crochet, finishing that double crochet with the new color turn for row two and chain one. Single crochet at the base of that chain one in the same stitch. Single crochet in the next. Chain one, skip the next stitch. One single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next three. And we're going to be repeating that same pattern, chaining one, skipping one, single crochet in the next three. So chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next three. And we're going to be repeating that same pattern to the last three stitches. Once I'm to the last three stitches, I'm going to chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the last two. And that means my last stitch 
is in then the top of those skipped chains from row one. So for row three, I'm going to turn and chain three, one, two, and three, and I'm going to work a puff stitch in that next chain one space. So I'm going to be skipping these stitches here, and I'm going to be working a puff in this chain space. And a puff is worked by yarning over, inserting my hook, and pulling up a loop five times. And you want that loop to be kind of tall in order to make a nice puff stitch. Yarning over, and you're gonna do that five times. Yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. I should have 11 loops on my hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Once you have all the loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over, pull through ten, not pull through that final loop. So now you're going to have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the remaining two, and you've made your first puff stitch. Chain two, skip the next stitch, and we're going to work a front post single crochet over the next stitch. A front post single crochet is worked around the single crochet from that previous row. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert our hook in between the two stitches, come around that stitch to the other side, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through two just like we do for a regular single crochet stitch. Chain two, work a puff in the next chain one space, so we're skipping that next stitch and working a puff in that chain one space, and again, yarning over, pulling up a loop five times. One, two, three, four, and five. Yarn over, pull through 10, yarn over, pull through two. Chain two. Skip the next stitch, front post, single crochet over the next stitch. Insert our hook from the front, around to the back, back out the front, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Chain two, puff stitch in the next. And we're just going to be repeating this. So one, two, three, four, and five. Yarn over, pull through 10, yarn over, pull through two, chain two. So we're just going to be repeating that same pattern until we get to the last chain one space. So continue on down, front post, single crochet, chain two, puff stitch in the next. So when we get to that last chain one space, I'm going to work a puff stitch in that last space. chain two, skip that next stitch, and single crochet in the last. Now for row four, I'm going to turn and chain one, and I'm going to work two single crochets in that chain space, that chain two space, chain one, work two single crochets in the next chain two space, chain one, work two single crochets in the next chain two space. And I'm just going to repeat that all the way down this row, working two single crochets in every chain two space with the chain one between. When we get to the end of this row, I'm going to be working two single crochets in each of those chain two spaces. When I get to this last space here, I'm going to chain one and then work two single crochets in that last chain three. And I'm going to turn for row five. 
and I'm going to chain three and I'm going to work a front post single crochet over that puff stitch that I worked from row three. So I'm going to skip the row uh, over that row that I just worked of those single crochets and I'm going to come down here and insert my hook around the top of that puff stitch yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over and pull through two just like I would a regular single crochet then I'm going to chain two and in that next chain one space I'm going to be working a puff stitch just as I did in that previous row, exactly the same. Five times yarning over and pulling up a loop. Chaining two, and then working a front post single crochet over that next puff. And I'm going to be repeating that, chaining two, puff stitch in that next chain one space, chain two, front post single crochet over that puff from below and chaining two. So just continue repeating that down your row. When I get to the end of that row, I've chained two after my puff, front post single crochet over that puff stitch from below, chaining two, and then single crochet in the last stitch. turn and row six is going to be a repeat of row four and row four is basically just chaining one and then you're going to be working two single crochets in every chain two space chain one chain uh, single crochet two single crochets in the next chain two space chain one two single crochets in the next chain two space and just continue that on down your row. When we get to the end of the row, I've chained one and two single crochets in that last chain space. Turn for row seven, and you can see the pattern starting to take shape here. So for row seven, chain three, work a puff in that next chain one space, chain two, front post single crochet over the puff from below, chaining two, puff in the next chain one space, chain two, front post single crochet over that puff, chaining two, puff in the next chain one space and just continue that on down your row. When I get to the end of that row, puff stitch in the last chain one space, chain two, single crochet in the last stitch. So at this point, you're just going to be repeating rows four through seven through the end of your blanket before we begin working on the edging. And of course, a row four is working uh, the two single crochets in every chain two space with a chain one between. So essentially, you're working one row of the single crochets, and then you're coming through and doing a row of your puff and front post single crochet stitches. And as you work through your rows, you're coming down and working those front posts over the puffs from the previous row and working your puffs in the chain one spaces. When your blanket is the length that you want, you're going to finish on a row four. So your last row is going to be a row of the single crochets before we move on to the edging and change colors. 
For my blanket, I went through row 130. That may be different depending on what your yarn you're using, um, but just measure and when you get to where you feel comfortable, the size that you want, um, you can stop at that point. Just make sure and end on a single crochet row. Once you're ready to move on to your border, you're going to be changing colors. We're gonna bring our color A back in here. and turn and I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. And that is going to count as my first stitch. I'm going to, I'm going to be working a double crochet row to match the one that I did at the beginning. So at the end of this you're going to have the same number of double crochet stitches, the same number of stitches that you had from row one and uh, for my blanket that would be 109 will be your stitch count. But I'm going to go ahead and work a row of double crochets and so you're going to work one double crochet in each stitch And then in order to get back to your stitch count, you're going to be working one double crochet in the last chain one space, because I'm skipping all of these chain one spaces that I have from that last row of single crochets. I'm just working double crochets into each stitch. I'm not working into the chain one spaces, and it looks like I missed a stitch. So only working in the stitches, skipping over those chain one spaces, one double crochet to that last chain one space. So when we get to the end of that row and that last chain one space, I'm going to work a double crochet in that chain one space and then a double crochet in the last two stitches. And that will get you back up to your stitch count. Make sure and verify that you're at the right stitch count before you move on. And then we're going to move on to the second row of the border or row 132 if you're making it the same size as my blanket. Chain one, single crochet in that same stitch. Skip the next stitch and then work a double crochet, chain one and a double crochet in that next stitch. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, skip the next stitch, one single crochet in the next, skip the next stitch, one double crochet, chain three, one double crochet in that same stitch. Skip the next stitch, one single crochet in the next, and we're going to repeat now, skipping the next stitch, one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet in that next stitch, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next, skip the next stitch, one double crochet, chain three, one double crochet in the next, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next, skip the next, one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet in the next, skip the next, single crochet in the next, skip the next, one double crochet, chain three, one double crochet in the next. And just continue repeating that same sequence down the row. When we get to the last four stitches, you're going to skip the next stitch, one double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the next. Skip the next stitch and single crochet in the last, so the top of that chain three turn. So for 133 I'm going to chain one, single crochet in the same stitch, one single crochet in the next 
stitch, two single crochets in the chain one space. So then in that chain three space, we're going to be working five double crochets. A pico, and a pico is four chains, one, two, three, and four, and then work a slip stitch in that fourth chain from the hook. So that first chain that we made, one, two, three, four, in that back bump, work a slip stitch. And then five more double crochets in that same chain three space. One, two, and five. So I've worked five double crochets, a pico, and five double crochets in that same chain three space. I'm going to work one single crochet in the chain one space. And then I'm going to repeat all the way down my row. Skip over the next stitches in that chain three space, five double crochets, a pico, and five double crochets. slip stitch in that fourth chain, five more double crochets in that same chain three, and then in that next chain one space, a single crochet and then continue that on down your row. So when we get to the end of our row, I've worked five double crochets, a pico, and five double crochets in that last chain three space. In that last chain one space, I'm going to work two single crochets, and then one single crochet in the last two stitches. and you've completed the border edging for one end of your blanket. Now we're ready to go ahead and repeat those last two rows that we did on the beginning edge of our blanket. So when we go to work those two rows on the beginning edge of our blanket, we're going to want to attach our yarn to the wrong side of our blanket. So it's going to be the back side of row one. So we're going to attach it in the first stitch and then repeat rows 132 and 133, which are the last two rows that we did for our border edge. So that will be a chain one and then working a single crochet in the same stitch, skipping the next stitch, working a double crochet chain one, double crochet in the next, and you're using those unused chain loops from that beginning chain. Skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next, skip the next stitch, one double crochet, chain three, one double crochet in the same stitch, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next. And then you're going to just finish out that row in that same pattern. And then you're going to be working your final row of your border in the same manner as uh, the other side of your blanket. And now we're ready to move on to our tassels. For my tassels, I use this handy little clover tassel maker. I use the largest size that they have. You don't have to have one of these to make your tassels, but I found with as many tassels as what I made for this blanket, uh, that using a little gadget really helped me out, saved me a lot of time. And uh, basically, if you wanted to uh, just use a piece of cardboard or a book, um, that would be perfectly fine. 
you're going to want to um, make your tassels about four inches tall. So you're going to want to use a four inch tall piece of cardboard in order to, to do that. Uh, I have mine uh, clover here on the largest size and I'm just going to wrap it 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then cut. And then cut a long piece. So then you take your long cord, wrap it around the center, tie it, then cut. going to be using the cord that you use to wrap to tie that's going to get sewn onto your blanket then I'm going to use another long strand and I'm going to make the little neck of my tassel so I'm going to lay my tassel here Lay my tassel here flat. I'm gonna take that long piece and I'm gonna make a loop, one end longer than the other. And I'm gonna lay that on top and I'm gonna hold that with my thumb. Take the long end and I'm going to wrap around top part of that tassel tightly about four times around or so. Then I'm going to take that end and I'm going to push it through that loop, keep a hold of it, and then the other end of that loop that I made I'm going to pull until the knot goes under those wraps that I just made. Then I'm going to trim trim any ends here at the end and now I'm ready to sew this to my blanket and you're going to be sewing these tassels into that pico. So at each one of these picots, you're going to be attaching your tassels. So with your tapestry needle, you're going to get these on your hook. Go through that pico. And just make a couple of passes, making sure those are securely attached to the edge of your blanket. Then I go through the top of my tassel, pull through trim those ends if need be um, and I've made and attached my first tassel so you're just going to repeat those steps for every one of your picots at the end of your blanket Thank you so much for being with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you never miss a new video. 
You can find all of my free patterns and tutorials at nanascraftyhome.com. Don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter. Thanks so much for being with me. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.